Hello and welcome to my next video on alkenes. Right, these are unsaturated. They have at least one carbon-carbon double bond. They are hydrocarbons, so they contain hydrogen and carbon, carbon only. And they have the general formula CnH2n. So we have C5 becomes H10. They all have the shape trigonal planar around a CHH with a bond angle of 120 degrees. They're also flat. And this, these, the next two diagrams is how the double bond works. So, what you've learned before is that electro, uh, a covalent bond is when electrons are shared. Really what it is is when electron orbitals overlap. That's what a natural covalent bond is. Now, in a carbon-carbon single bond, you have two orbitals overlap to form a sigma bond. And that's one of the bonds that occurs in the carbon double bond. But you and these form out of basically F orbitals. They're actually something slightly else, but that's university degree level. You don't need to know that. But they're also p orbitals. So there's and what happens is well, these overlap as well and become like this, and this forms a pi bond. That's very simply all all you have to do. You just know those two drawings, and that's how and just label them. Later on, we'll see how the pi bond and sigma bond control reactions and stuff like that. So, isomerism. Firstly, structural isomerism. You can move the double bond about, changing the name. So, in here, if you have something like ethene or propene, you know, you, you count the ene at the lowest carbon possible. So, in this case, it's carbon 1 on the first picture. So, propene, it can only be prop one ene so we just leave it propene only can be ethene in this case butene you can have it on the first carbon or between the first and the second or between the second and the third so it can be but one ene or but two ene now this one also undergoes ez isomerism that's eingegen and zusammen in german also can be called cis and trans so we have two forms there's z but two ene and c but two ene here now the conditions needed for EZ isomerism is to have a CC carbon double bond which prevents rotation of the molecule and two different groups on each on each the carbon in a double bond. So if you had three H's and a CH2 that cannot undergo CA, um, EZ isomerism. So Z butuene is now Suzam and these means together so they're on the same side and you have C between this is when they're on opposite sides. Now trans is C, cis is Z. The way we like to remember it is if you look at the two different groups on the carbon carbon double bond of two of Z between you see that both of them are on the top. So if you go from C to C to C to C you form a little C shape. That's a nice way to remember it. So now reactions now, something a little, little curious here. A sing, a C C single bond has a bond enthalpy of 347 kilojoules per mole. A C double C bond has one of 612 kilojoules per mole minus one. Now, if if you if you've seen that the carbon double bond isn't double the single bond, and this is why the single bond. It, or the sigma bond has a different bond enthalpy from the pi bond and since a, pi, since a carbon double bond contains one pi one sigma it shows that they are not equal in energy so this means that when we when an alkene reacts the pi bond breaks first and the sigma bond remains intact and you'll see what, why that happens or why that's important later so just to clarify, a sigma bond does not equal a pi bond. And addition reactions. Here you go, here's where it's useful. There are four we need to know about hydrogen, halogens, hydrogen halides, and steam. And they're all the same principle, you just need to know the conditions and what forms. So I'm using ethene in all cases. Ethene plus hydrogen under the conditions of a nickel catalyst and 150 degrees Celsius forms ethane. As you see, 
what you start off with CC double bond, end up with a CC single bond. The pi bond is the one that breaks. So halogens, they can be Br2, C, L2, I2. No, no conditions, but this forms, in this case, 1,2-dibromoethane. If you want to know about naming stuff, go to the halogenoalkane video. Hydrogen halides, that's hydrogen bromide, hydrogen chloride. So that's just this time when the bond breaks, you have one hydrogen and one bromine form. That's bromoethane, ethane, sorry. And finally, steam. This is just obviously water in its gaseous state. Ethene plus water or steam becomes ethanol. Because you think of it as one of the hydrogens goes and attaches to one C and you're left with an OH which attaches to the other C. Polymers, polymerization. You have one alkene monomer, that could be ethene. One says the C double bond is broken, yet again the pi bond breaks. And then all the different monomers join together in addition to polymerization to form a polymer. And this is the poly of the alkene. So if you had ethene, it's polyethene. If you had but butetoene, it's polybutetoene. And here are some examples. Well, here's an example of fluoroethene. So you have one fluorine molecule. And this is how you draw polymerization happening. If they just say show the monomer show show the polymerization of fluoroethene. So there's N, it's an unlimited number, and then you have the bond breaks. The F stays where it is, but you've now got two bonds coming off the carbon because it needs four bonds. Two carbons come two bonds coming off, but they're not attached to anything, so other monomers would join up. And you just put a little N bracket. The brackets have to go through the bonds coming off the carbon, and then this is polyfluoroethene. Now they might ask you for two repeat units. So you've got your original um, monomer here, so you've got the CCHHHF. That's the monomer, and then you just draw it without the brackets or the N and draw two of them joined together. Um, you also might be asked to identify the monomer. All you look, you shoot for two carbons, and then whatever's on the four of them, you, you just take that, add a double bond, and you're done. Polymer waste. Now, to get rid of polymers, you can burn them, but this produces toxic gases, which isn't great, but it can also provide energy used to heat other processes. You can recycle them. To do this you sort them and you can reclaim them and recycle them. You can just simply reuse them. And it can also be cracked into so you can get small chain alkanes and alkenes from them. But also scientists are trying to develop biodegradable or compostable polymers. So that means you can throw them into landfill because you can bury them landfill but that takes up space it's not good for the environment so you want to develop biodegradable polymers or compostable polymers so we can just throw them away and they'll degrade naturally over time so conclusion alkenes have a carbon carbon double bond consisting with sigma and pi bond they undergo addition reactions and they undergo polymerization one example of an addition reaction you need to know is the um, electrophilic addition if you go to my mechanism video you'll see it there Yet again, short video. These are these don't need to be too long, but they cover all you need to know. Really, you don't need to know that much, but I do suggest you um, do past paper questions on these sorts of things. See what sort of questions they may ask. Any questions, always ask, like, comment, suggest ideas on how to improve anything. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.